Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to King's this morning. It's amazing, isn't it, how far God goes to, to get us to start punctually every week. <laughs> Do you remember the old days? <laughs> 22, quarter two, yeah. It's, it's great to see so many of you here, and uh, we welcome you on the live stream as well this morning. Um, yeah, we're one church, aren't we? We're the body of Christ. Um, we're united in him, regardless of where we are physically this morning. I hope your week's been really good and that you've seen God at work in your, your life and uh, in the lives of those around you as well. We know that in life, um, good things happen and bad things happen. And as a church family at the moment, uh, we've seen a fair few challenging times, haven't we? But I'm, I'm really excited. I'm really excited because next week we're starting a new series looking at Elijah with the subtitle, Exploring the Highs and Lows. Now, if you weren't a Christian, you might say, well, that's a coincidence, isn't it? Or you might say, that's, that's good human planning or that's good luck. But but we know that God's meeting us right where we are at the moment, that he's equipping us for today. Those of us that are struggling at work and at school, and also those who are excited about starting new jobs, those of us that are going through the upheaval of moving house, as we prepare to celebrate the arrival of new life, and at the same time, mourn those we've lost. God is here with us. And we can be strengthened in knowing God in the good times and the bad times. And when times are tough, God's always there to comfort us and to lead us on. We just thank you, God, for that. If you'd like to prepare for next week, you could spend five minutes. It only takes five minutes to read 1 Kings 17. What a great investment of five minutes that would be over the next week. So why not make a note of that, 1 Kings 17. Anyway, that's next week. Um, can, we, can I ask you to continue to pray for uh, Naomi and Petros and for the safe arrival of their baby this week. Naomi's been in hospital for most of this week. Also pray uh, for Charles, who's feeling a bit unwell this morning as well. Um, for those that didn't get the message, there won't be uh, youth going out today because uh, Charles is unwell. In fact, why don't we just pray pray for them now? Lord, I pray you'd, you'd be with uh, Naomi and Petros and the, the baby, Lord. And uh, Lord, in your timing, in your way, Lord, we just pray that, yeah, that we'd welcome and celebrate the, the safe arrival of their baby. And we pray that you'd uh, strengthen Charles today and bring healing to him. So, we've got Emma and the band leading us uh, in a time of worship. And later we've got, we've got Lee, um, who's going to be uh, speaking to us about creative kindness. I'm looking forward to hearing about that. And then, of course, Paul will be bringing the final talk in our series uh, on Ecclesiastes, sharing more from the wisdom of Solomon. But now let's focus on worship. If you're able, why don't you stand with me and, and let's pray. Lord, we thank you that, that whatever happens in life, the ups and the downs, the good times and the bad, that you're our constant source of strength and comfort and joy. Lord, all that we're going through, we lay it down now. Hebrews 12 tells us, throw off everything that hinders to persevere and to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith. Yes, Jesus, we fix our eyes on you right now, our source. 
Amen. first song we've chosen is um, a new song to us uh, today. It's come into um, the prayer slots that I've been doing. You know, when we've been praying for, for Coventry, people are taking an hour at a time, and I've done a few of those. And I've only, I'd only heard the song twice, but it kind of cropped up on, on a playlist of mine at the beginning of each slot that I, I did. I've only done three slots. And, you know, when you just feel that God is um, easing you into praying for the city, and praying into our own lives. So it's a song that um, just talks, I guess, about the authority that God has in our lives, um, about overcoming, about God, you know, making a difference, um, about the, the presence of God um, and the power and the majesty of God. So just thought if we just uh, can uh, meditate on this, pray on this, and just kind of place God where we believe he belongs you know right at the at the at the center of our our time at the center of our lives and our our world
what your will be done in our life as it is in heaven. We align ourselves with you, Lord. We look at our own personal scenarios, situations, and we align ourselves with you. our city and we align our city with you with your heartbeat and our world your world we align it with you your kingdom come your will be done Lord start there it's the um, it's kind of a month of prayer for the city as well that Emma's kind of just mentioned and um, I was just talking to a, a, a young man this morning friend of Ethan friend of Edwin sorry uh, whose name is Ethan and we were just talking about you know he's been doing some work sharing the gospel on the streets and uh, with people and um, you know that's such good news such good news and, and so father we just pray for the gospel of Jesus to heal the brokenhearted to um, restore, to heal, to revive in this city, in Coventry, in this community, in Charlesmore. Father, we pray for the move of your Holy Spirit just to rescue people uh, and restore them into relationship with, with you. And Father, we, we've got this kind of summer coming and we pray for opportunities to share Jesus and to make your kingdom known um, in this area and in this city. Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
How great you are, Lord. In Luke 19, um, when Jesus was uh, approaching Jerusalem, a whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But Jesus said, Even if they kept quiet, the very stones would cry out. Lord, how great are you. It's that very special time in the service now where we do the notices. Everybody looks forward to this part. I have to stand to the left. There we go. So this is King's and here's our welcome banner. I think you all know that because you're here. Um, Ecclesiastes. So Paul is with us for the final, third and final part later on. The meaning of life. You looking forward to that? I've already mentioned Elijah next week, exploring the highs and lows. After that, we've got five ways to connect. Hopefully, you're all aware of those as well. This is probably the most important slide, isn't it? It's important to, remem to remind ourselves why we're here. Why do we exist as, as King's Church? And why are we here this morning? This is what we're all about, isn't it? Making Jesus known. And this is how we operate. By developing lives filled with prayer and developing relational communities with, e with each other, within the church, in our small groups, and also with those around us. We're developing leaders as well, encouraging each other bringing out our spiritual gifts and abilities, whilst also remembering and responding to the needs of the poor and the persecuted in the world today. It's so important to see this every week and remind ourselves. 
giving to the vision of the church. So all the items on the previous slide don't just happen. We need everyone to get involved. And maybe you can get involved financially if you can. Here are the details to do that. Is it prayer evenings next? I think it is. Join us this evening if you can. God is good. He hears our prayers and he responds. He answers them. I'd like you to encourage you to come along and join us later if you can. Small groups. God's really blessing us through small groups at the moment. They're a safe place for us to share life together, to talk things through and to support each other, to explore the Bible together and explore the Holy Spirit together as well. I had some really encouraging news from Andrew in the week. I um, hope you're watching, Andrew. Thanks for sending that through. Just some details of, of how his group's developing, and we're so, we're so thankful for that. If you're not in a small group, then please catch up with me later or speak to one of the leaders, Nalin and Paul, and we can make that happen. Okay, now there's two ways to support the community. One is very easy, just buying coffee. Uh, we, we can start after the meeting today. The 50% season is over, but we're still able to offer half price drinks after the service, so that's really good, isn't it? You have to play, pay full price for food, but hey, that's still a bargain. Um, Paul was telling me earlier, we're staying on C3 for a moment, Joe. Paul was telling me earlier on Friday that it was a, a record day uh, for sales. Uh, things are, are looking better now, um, but I'd really like to encourage you to call in on the uh, visit the coffee shop in the week if you're in the area and you're able to to support. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> I did catch up with Joe yesterday about about the food hub. Joe's uh, a trustee. So the food hub, if you don't know, offers um, twenty pounds worth of food. Um, for, for just four pounds for those uh, in the community that need it. Numbers are, are down a little at the moment, so we don't know at the moment whether that's down to um, a reduced need or whether just people aren't, aren't coming forward. Maybe they're too proud to ask for, for help. Um, so that's something to pray for. Um, it'd be a real shame if, if people were in need and uh, weren't using that service. The... Uh, the, the Food Hub's plan to meet with the directors because there's um, consideration at the moment to, to actually build um, a, an extension on the side of the uh, community centre here to, to help support um, the Food Hub. So please, please pray for that. And I think overall, um, the, prayer, the prayer that we have is that the Food Hub would um, be part of the integrated support that we, we offer this community and that all of that would work seamlessly together. Um, so that's, that's really um, some good things to hear and uh, plenty to pray for. So thanks for that update, Joe. Lee, are you able to come and speak to us about creative kindness? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Joe. Take it out. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, just, just, just stand yeah. there. Just stand yeah. there and do it. This works, yeah, this works. I'm not doing anything. You go that way a bit. You move forward a bit to there. Keep going. I need yeah. to see Lee. You don't really need to see me that much at all. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Jonathan. So Jonathan just mentioned the um, cafe uh, as a really good connection point with the community and the food hub, which is a really good connection point into the community. And then we've got this wellbeing project, which is still at its very, very early stages. So the wellbeing project, which you've heard us talk about already a little bit, is, is a way of um, building um, people up, really, in, in church, but also in the community as well. So let me just quickly recap where we've got to, and then Lee's going to share sort of the next stages as well. So where we've got to is we've talked about the wellbeing toolkit up to now, having a toolkit of things that you can turn to and do that will help your well-being, like, like walking, like cooking, listening to music. Um, um, I was talking, we were talking to Ethan 
um, Ethan Downey, there's two Ethans today, to Ethan Downey this time, talking to Ethan Downey, and he's just started a, um, a U version plan on his Bible app. And the one that he started and is doing, is really enjoying, is one about gratitude. I think it's 20 days of gratitude. And it was really lifting him up. And, and, and he was, you know, a really good plan of just about learning to give thanks to God for all the blessings. And so if you want to do a really good um, uplifting you version plan, um, then I'd recommend that one. Um, so it's about gratitude. You'd find it on the you version Bible, suitable for youth and for, for adults as well. So we've got the toolkit, and then we want people to connect and talk about the toolkit. How, how could they do that? How could we talk about the toolkit together? I'm just thinking of church at the moment still. Uh, we want to do a, some sort of workshop. So, yeah, we could do a workshop. If anyone's interested, we could sign up and just express thoughts, interest in it, and yeah. we can share how to phrase this. It's like not best practice, but share ideas of what you do because we can all learn from... You know, yes. So, yeah. yeah. So just like I, like you've been sharing every week, actually, the last couple of weeks, and I've just shared an example of what Ethan's yeah. doing. Um, you know, and so it's just literally sharing ideas of, of in, improving your well-being and, and maintaining your resilience. Uh, and it, it's you know, it's hard to really fully appreciate the way coronavirus over the last 12 months has impacted our well-being and our mental health. It's easy to just think, I'm fine, it's all right, I got through it, it's over. But actually, it's probably affected us more than we, we know relationally and emotionally. And a lot of the isolations and the uncertainties do affect us. So it's good just to connect in, in a small group and just talk about well-being and talk about ideas for well-being. Okay, so that's kind of stage two. So stage one is a kind of a toolkit. Stage two is kind of a, a, a workshop to gather to talk about the toolkit. And now at stage three, we were going to have um, some ladies with us this morning. There was a bit of a mix-up of dates so that they're not here this morning. They're hoping to come next week. Yeah. Yeah. And they're from a group called... Yeah, the group is called uh, Creative Kindness, and there is a, web, a Facebook page, but they're supported by uh, Coventry Mind. Um, of Grapevine, I'm not sure which one. But Creative Kindness um, started uh, about two a year ago, and they go into different, into libraries, central libraries, and they just basically are a place where people can connect and do creative things. So it's, it's, it's a mixed group. Um, what they do with the gifts that they make, which are cards or little things, they gift those to anyone. And so we have an amazing opportunity for them to do some workshops with us as church community. And those gifts that uh, are created in those sessions will be given to um, the food hub residents, so the food hub um, yeah, 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 yeah. family. So, um, so basically putting it, so it's an opportunity really to share some, something positive with our community and through this. So that's Creative Kindness, it's an amazing group. And if you hear their story, we've got some cards here. Joe's gonna be here next Sunday. Chris, Joe and Chris, uh, they founded, uh, Chris formed this group. And um, they're gonna be here, they'll have a table at the back where they can display some of the work they've done and um, be able to talk a bit more about it. But we have a sign up sheet today, if you wanted to sign up for one of the sessions there in July, the 8th, the 15th, and the 22nd of July from 1.30 to 3, um, 3 p.m. And it'll be, it'll be here in this, in this space in the community center. So it's an amazing opportunity to come out and you don't have to be perfect at art or any type of thing. You could be just any, anything, you know, just, she gave me a card the first time I met Joe, amazing. It just, I'll show it to you actually. gave me this card and I, <laughs> it's it's very simple it's all it is basically it will be okay and sometimes that's all someone needs to hear so it's nothing rocket science but just having something and she has her um, basically they have their um, who it was made by creative kindness um, group but amazing group, and sometimes we overcomplicate gifting, and it's actually something quite simple, and just nothing profound, no fancy words, just simple. It'll be okay. 
and just hearing it sometimes, that's all we need to hear sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's fantastic. So just give you two action points from that. One, if you're a Facebook user, um, go on to your Facebook page and type in creative kindness and you'll see the kind of work they do. So it's creative kindness. That's one action point if, you, if you're on Facebook. Otherwise, they will be sharing next, next week. The two, two ladies will come along next week. Just to mention, Alan, they yep. were in the park, Memorial That's park, right. this past week. Doing some doing creative some kindness. So they, yeah. they're not, this hasn't even stopped them, you know, from... Yeah, coronavirus hasn't stopped them, has it, at all, yeah. So it is quite nice. It's fabulous. So one action point, if you go onto their Facebook page, if you're a Facebook person, um, uh, number two, if you grab one of these flyers at the end, just, just for information, there are three dates when these two ladies, lovely ladies, Christian ladies, will be um, running three sessions on creative kindness, creating things like Lee's just shown, to hopefully put and support the food bank, food hub, sorry, food hub. So you can see the kind of connections going on, on there. So take one of those and look them up on Facebook it, it, as well. It, it's an amazing opportunity. I mean, I do, I took, my son and I, we volunteer at the food hub on sat some Saturdays. And when we deliver the stuff to people, I mean, one lady just said, oh, I look forward to this day. This is <laughs> like, and you know, you get opportunity just to say little things to people. You're like, how, how are you doing? How was your week? And you have a little bit of conversation and they're like, yeah, how are you doing? And they have a laugh. They said, I don't drink tea, you know, but you know, and, and just very different conversations, but it's fun. And sometimes you're the only person that they're actually connecting with that week that they actually had a chance to actually smile with someone or just connect. Yeah, yeah. It's very simple. So I think they'll appreciate these little cards, you know, in their food bag, something a bit nice. Fantastic. So, exciting. Yeah. That's exciting. That's exciting. So you'll meet the two ladies next week and they'll talk to you more about it. Thanks, Lee, yeah. and Thank thanks, you. Jonathan. Yeah, thanks very much, guys. Okay, it's time for the young people to go out. We, we thank Hannah and Hope this morning who are leading the young people. As I mentioned, uh, the youth are, are staying in with us. Um, we just pray for you guys as you leave. So we just um, pray that it would be a, a special morning. It would be filled um, with joy and with fun. Um, but as they meet together uh, out the back there, that um, they would meet with you as well, that it would be a, a time when they'd recognize your voice. But, uh, yeah, we just pray for the, your blessing on them. Amen. Okay, Paul. We just thank you for Paul. Uh, we thank you for all that he brings, and we thank you for the word you've given him to share this morning. And uh, pray that you, yeah, you'd anoint him afresh with the Holy Spirit to bring us new revelation today, for your glory. Amen. Okay. Well, you can see what the title is this morning. How good are you at seeing opportunities for wisdom or um, careful thinking, careful action uh, in your life? Well, the book of Ecclesiastes um, is filled with so much uh, wonder. It's filled with so much stuff that is um, helpful for us for living life uh, in a wise way, in an appropriate way in our society. In fact, Book of Ecclesiastes is probably more relevant after lockdown and COVID uh, than it ever has been. But just a couple of, of points to get you to think. Um, you can actually listen to the whole um, book of Ecclesiastes in 35 minutes. So when you're cooking the food tomorrow or lunch, in fact, lunch you might even, if you're doing a full English, you might even get through it twice. Uh, Though, just something else to consider, the book of Ecclesiastes shouldn't be read alone. You actually need to consider the rest of the Bible. You need to consider what Jesus said, um, what Paul said about wisdom and knowledge. So there's so much here, and I haven't got that much time, but hopefully there's going to be some stuff which can challenge you, stretch you, and get you to think perhaps in a different way. So 
in one sense, the Book of Ecclesiastes is a toolkit. So Lee brings his toolkit. Solomon brings his toolkit as well. There's so much here. Uh, and it's important that we explore this in more details in our small groups. So in one sense, this is the talk before the small group. So it's important to be part of a group because you can discuss it in more detail. I want to start off by looking at Solomon because most people feel that Solomon wrote the book. Some scholars question, did he actually write it? And so this is quite important here. So as you can see on, on the screen, um, so the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream. Has the Lord ever appeared to you in a dream at night? He could do. The same God. God chooses. That could happen for you. And God said, ask for whatever you want me to give you. You ever prayed a prayer like that? Or have you ever heard God speak in that way? And he says, so, so give your servant a discerning heart. So this is what, this is what he says. I've, I've cut and pasted this a little bit. Um, Solomon says, so give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and distinguish between right and wrong for who is able to govern this great people of yours. Um, so God said to him, since you have asked for this and not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have you asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment and administering justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart. I have become wise, so that there will never have been anyone like you. Um, nor will there ever be. Moreover, I will give you what you have not asked for wealth and honor, so that in your lifetime you will have no equal among kings. So, who knows? God always gives more than we ask. Do you know that for your own life? God will give you more than you ask. What are you asking for? It doesn't matter whether you're young or whether you're old. Today is your day to ask God for something. You know, and we need to ask. Uh, Matthew 7, 7, ask, seek, and knock. It's a good way to remember that. Ask. Why not? Are you going to live in passivity for the rest of your life? Are you going to be assertive in getting on with something, being different? Okay, so we jump from that. So that's a bit of a background with Solomon. Ever hated life? While well, Solomon said he hated life. Ever fed up? Well, if that is the case, if you've ever hated life, and I suspect everybody has at one time or other, this book is your book, and it could do wonders for you. Thirty times it uses this word smoke, or as the NIV, meaningless. Smoke is a better term than probably the meaningless. But what does it say is smoke? What exactly does it say? Everything describes as meaningless. Pleasure. Inheritance. Because how do you know that the person you give your money to, your possessions, is going to do something good with it? How do you know? You know, if a parent or grandparent was to die and you were given loads of money, would you be wise with it? Okay, what else is smoke? Because work days are painful, and even at night, your mind does not rest. Our bodies, it's depressing, isn't it? Our bodies, like the animals, will rot in the ground. What a wonderful day. Toil springs from envy of wanting to be better than everybody else. Much dreaming is smoke. Many words. You ever been in a conversation with someone and you just wanted to say, please shut up, please say a little bit less, or let me speak as well. Um, not being satisfied with your income. Do you always want more money? Well, Solomon says this is smoke. The laughter of fools. Righteous, perishing and really struggling. We see that around the world. But the wicked living long in their wickedness. 
and even says youth and vigor are meaningless. So, although it could seem it's quite depressing, there's actually great tunnels of light that shine into you and into me as we go through uh, this book. There's also lots of questions. Some in our church are school teachers. Anybody taught? Well, there's 41 questions that he poses in this book. So, one for every school week, plus two for your holidays. There you go. If you ever uh, hate life, ask questions. Don't just hate it, ask questions. And there's some questions here. What do I gain by being wise? What do you gain by being wise? It almost feels like Solomon's being really cynical here, and the book does unpack some really good stuff. For who knows what is good for a person in life during the few and meaningless or smoke days they pass through like a shadow? Who can tell them what will happen after the sun, under the sun, after the sun, under the sun, after they're gone? But also, there's a sense of searching. People are searching, you're searching, our world, people are searching for love, they're searching for truth, they're searching for identity, they're searching to know what they should do next. They're searching when they should put the next foot in front of the other. There's much searching. And this is expressed in these verses here. Because the wicked do not fear God, it will not go well with them, and their days will not lengthen like a shadow. God wants our days to lengthen like a shadow. What does that actually mean? It means we have impact. We have impact on other people. In September and March, the sun is quite low and the shadows are quite large on buildings and trees and all sorts, and in the evening and morning, of course. But the shadow has an impact. It protects, um, you know, it protects from the sun, the powerful rays of the sun. And so God's dream, God's heart is that we impact other people's lives more so as we get, as you get older, as you grow. God created mankind upright, and we see that in the garden, but they have gone in search of many schemes. You know, the world is scheming. It's not looking for the wisdom that only God can provide. Another perspective here, which is important, I've never read this book, by the way, but I needed to put an image in, so here it is. The burden is light, and honestly, this is uh, what Jesus said about the burden being light. So on one hand, there's a burden, but there's a gift as well. You know, life is a burden. You know what it's like for your life to be a burden, but it's also a gift. And uh, someone can weigh you down with bad news on the same day as they can actually give you a gift or someone else can turn up. I actually found a, a box of chocolates and a note outside the front door this week, or I think it was a, maybe a previous week. Basically, the neighbors saying they were having a noisy party, but a bit of a sweetener to say, look. But you, you can call me. Here are our mobile numbers. You can call me. And actually, it wasn't too bad. And um, Ethan, who lives in my house, and... He wasn't, um, he, he didn't disturb him. It was just some background noise, a few bottles being thrown around, st stuff like that. No, it was okay. It was okay. Okay, so the writer often says, what a heavy burden God has laid on mankind. Or, this is from the hand of God. Eat and find satisfaction is a gift from God. So look, when you're eating your food and you feel happy, don't feel guilty. Be glad that God has given you the ability to eat. He's given you a mouth. He's given you that. So, you know, be glad, be thankful when you're eating your lovely food, whatever that is. Eat and find satisfaction is a gift from God. Uh, 3 uh, verse 13. Wealth and possessions are also described as a gift from God. So if you're poorer than your neighbor or you're considerably richer than your neighbor, don't compare, but thank God for what he has given you. 
You know, life is a test to trust and a temporary assignment, and it goes really quickly. And God uses so many different ways. Some have more, some have less. But, you know, we are accountable before God for what we do with what we've got, not for what we don't have or the envy of others. Okay, right. The three, we've got C3 today. We've got open in a bit. We've got W3, wealth, wine and work. So these are your three what we're going to look at. Now imagine this. You have three children. You name one wealth. You name another wine and you name another work. Which is your favorite child? Which is your favorite, favorite one? Why would you name your children those? But you might do. You might do. Okay, for those of you who love wealth, this is what the Bible says. This is what Ecclesiastes says about wealth. And I uh, love that man hiding behind the dollars. I didn't find time to get some English 20s or whatever. Okay, where are we? I'm just So, yeah, these, this is what it says about wealth. Whoever loves money never has enough. Anybody know what that's like? You've got a bit of money? Oh, it's not enough because what I want costs a lot more. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with their income. These are principles for life that are in here for a reason. And then he says, I've seen a grievous, e grievous evil under the sun. Wealth hoarded to the harm of its owners. And we see that, don't we? A certain Jeff who's being propelled to space, costing 10 billion or whatever it is, for 10 minutes with his brother and coming back down again. Great use of money. You know, people who've got great amounts of money on the earth use it so wisely, don't they? Sorry, I've dis have I disappeared out of the image. Okay, so you've got them out on one hand, and then we see wealth lost through some misfortune, so that when they have children, there's nothing left for them to inherit. But, you know, who knows that the children are going to do anything good with it anyway. So, there we go. Merely loving wealth and handing it on to others is never truly satisfying. Wealth can harm those who store, and it can harm those who lose. You can have so much and simply not enjoy it. So that's wealth. You know, and just remember, it's not money that's the root of all evil. It's the love of money that is the root of all evil. Quite different. Money is a resource to be used by God wisely. Okay, so those of you who that was your favorite child, wealth. Some of you, wine. So you just love wine, don't you? Well, this could be a bit more than wine. It's, it represents the pleasures of this life, whatever they are. I tried cheering. Sorry, I need to move on. This is about seeing opportunities and, and seeing wisdom in our lives for God to move. So wine. Look at those lovely grapes. I prefer fruit than wine, but I guess it's the same, isn't it, really, when it's fermented? I tried cheering myself with wine. Have you tried that? Did it work? No. And embracing folly, my mind still guiding me with wisdom. So wisdom didn't leave him, stayed with him. I wanted to see what was good for people to do under the heavens during the few days of their lives. Now, how long this study took, I don't know. But presumably some time, I mean, he, he planted trees, reservoirs, you know, reservoirs rather. It, it, you know, it took time to come up. So clearly this would have taken a period of time. Um, so we can explore so much and ne not find satisfaction. And he's tried with wine. And the summary of this is eat and drink and find satisfaction in your work. Okay, so that's uh, wine. We could see, even within this, an opportunity for God to work, for God to move. So work. It's a bit depressing, this. Do you love work? Do you like work? No. Well, what, okay, look. What percentage do you not like work? If you don't, you're probably in the wrong job if 
you don't like your work nearly all the time. You probably need to do what someone said, find out what you're good at and find a way to get paid to do it. That's probably, um, that's probably something that's worth doing. But anyway, that's, I'm getting a little bit off topic, so let's come on here. Work, so my heart began to despair. Your he heart despairing. You just haven't had breakfast and are hungry and wanting to get to lunch. But So my heart began to despair over all my toilsome labor under the sun. For a person may labor with wisdom, knowledge, and skill, and then they must leave all they own to another who has not toiled for it. This too is meaningless in the great misfortune. What do people get for all the toil and anxious striving with which they labor under the sun? Another question. Come on, why don't you answer these questions? Well, C3 later, we, we'll stay open as long as you want to keep drinking coffee. You can, ask, you can go for all 41 questions if you really want to. Uh, and uh, here, all their days, their work is grief and pain, and even at night, their minds do not rest. Gosh, what a miserable existence. I think it's time to leave, isn't it? No, there is, there is some good stuff. There is some good stuff, which I'm going to move on to in a little bit. I'm going to look at wisdom. Gosh, man, so which is your favorite child? Wine, wealth, or work? But what is wisdom? What's your wisdom like? Does your wisdom start with wonder? Where does it start? Where does it come from? We know wisdom comes from God. If you want to be wise, look to God, not to people. But you can certainly learn from others. So there's some uh, little prohibits here. Wisdom makes one person more powerful than ten rulers in a city. So what do you want? Do you want to be a ruler of ten districts of Coventry? Or would you just be a wise person doing what God says? A bit of wisdom to bring your family up. You know, the call of Abraham, yes, he was a man of faith, but his actual call was just to raise a family. That's fine. Who says you're not the man or woman of God? You know, if you don't, you know, conquer cities and be a ruler of people. A person's wisdom brightens their face and changes its hard appearance. Have you seen people, wise people, and how they're just inspired and it radiates on their face? You do see that. So there's just some practical stuff here. But I've dropped in here, Colossians, because it's important that we see how the Bible is knitted and woven together, just like God does that with us in our mother's womb. He does that in the Bible as well. My goal is... Everybody has a goal. My goal is that they may be encouraged. Is your goal, you come here on a Sunday to encourage others. That is, should be our motive to connect with others. Encouragement, bring courage, encouragement into our lives. We all have a responsibility with this. My goal is that they may be encouraged how and where, in heart and united in love. Encouraged in heart, deep inside, united in love together. So that so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding, in order that you may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Solomon, read these words. <laughs> you know, this is what we want him to read. Jumping back to him. I applied my mind to study and explore by wisdom all that is done under the heavens. What a heavy burden God has laid on mankind, in whom are hidden in Christ all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible has a vast array of literature. It uses so much to communicate um, God's heart and also to show us how not to live our lives as well. What a heavy burden God has laid on mankind. With much wisdom comes much sorrow. Do you want to be wise? Anybody want to be wise? Get your bucket. You're going to need it to collect your tears. Much knowledge, much grief, much sorrow. And he says, he became greater by far than any in Jerusalem before me. In all this, my wisdom stayed with me. 
for some reason, he wanted to know that wisdom had stayed with him. Okay. So this is really reflecting on the, the sections where there's wisdom. He has made everything beautiful in his time. Everything beautiful in his time. Maybe we start out ugly. But in the timing of God, he wants beauty to come. He has made everything beautiful in his time. He has also set eternity in the human heart, yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I know, I know that there is nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good while they live. But each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in their toil. You know, maybe that's your prayer. In your toil, in your struggle, find satisfaction. This is our gift of God. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. God does it so that people will fear him. So what are the opportunities before you? You know, we've unpacked, I've unpacked some of us in this book. I just want to ask you this question as we, we, we wrap things up. I've just got a small section and then a, a prayer here. So what is most important to you at this moment? What do you care about the most? What is important? Engage your heart, engage your mind. What is important? Because Solomon, in the book of Ecclesiastes, just does describe a few things here. He says this. The words of the wise are like goads. They're collected sayings like firmly embedded nails. You know, what are your firmly embedded nails? What are they? Given by one shepherd... Be warned, my son, of anything in addition to them, of making many books, there is no end. Much study wearies the body. Study is not the answer to life. It just tires you out. You know, you can get some wine, some cheese or something. Just a practical stuff as, uh, in here is that I want to encourage myself and you, read the Bible aloud to yourself and those around because it's God's word that will endure forever. Your words, so many of them will drop to the ground, but it's God's word which will go forth. And uh, Ecclesiastes um, 10, 11, 10, 12 says, the words of the wise are, the words from the mouth of the wise are gracious. How do you know if you're wise? Face will often brighten. The words from your mouth will be gracious of how they impact other people. And we get this through knowing God's word. And uh, here we have, now all has been heard. Here is the conclusion of the matter. So he's concluding everything he said. Fear God and keep his commands. This is the duty of all mankind. For God will bring every deed into judgment, including every hidden thing, whether it is good or evil. And you know, the New Testament uh, says that as well. And I was just thinking this morning, just the incredible complexity of God, that he will judge trillions upon trillions of choices, actions, thoughts, and deeds. There's nothing, nothing in all creation is, is hidden from him. You know, and it will all account. And, um, but yeah, the, even the past will have to an account. It's even suggested, um, although it's debatable, it's even suggested that animals will have to give an account. Everything in all creation has to account before God. No one gets away with anything, you, me, or anyone. You just don't. Whatever is has already been, and what will be has already been before, has been before. God will call the past to account. I said to myself, God will bring into judgment both the righteous and the wicked, for there will be a time for every activity, a time to judge every deed. And at the end, no one has power over the time of their death. You don't choose when you die, do you through healthy choices? Can you prolong your life? Well, clearly. Uh, the writer thinks our lives should be prolonged like shadows, impacting other people. Okay. So much to think about. 
Um, it really, you know, you could listen to talks and you can hear the best sermons in the world, but really your own personal study for your own life, hearing from God directly from him is so important. You know, this isn't supposed to be where you get fed, get fed from your own walk with Jesus. This is just hopefully a top up. I've, I've written a prayer here, which we, I want us to pray together. I've tried to put together some practical points uh, from the book. So if we could uh, read this together. We can't sing together, but we can read aloud together, I gather. So three, two, one. Thank you, Father, for being the author of wisdom, knowledge, and happiness. Help me to understand that there is a time and procedure for everything. Grow me as a listener of you first, then I will come to worship. I want to fear you, Father, and do that I will and that I will avoid all extremes. When times are good, I thank you for happiness, but when times are bad, help me to acknowledge that God has allowed both. Yeah, so that's fair. Just one more thing that came out in there is that being a listener of God is really important and it does come out as sort of the important thing. So let's be those who listen. Let's pray. Uh, Father, there's so much in this book for us to consider. But help us to be people who hear from you. Help us to be people who acknowledge that you are the author of everything. All our wisdom, all our knowledge, all our happiness. So, Father, we want to be people who make wise choices and impact lives. Help us to keep looking for opportunities for wisdom in our lives, to put this stuff into practice. Father, may we be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Father, that our words would be like firmly, firmly embedded goads that they would count, they would make a difference. And Father, we pray for those who are young, we pray for those who are sort of middle age and those who are older. Father, we ask that for each person here, that we would respond appropriately to what you're saying to us this morning. Amen.
Yes, Lord, we, we exalt you this morning. Yeah, we set aside the things that distract us, Lord. We, we come before you empty-handed, but alive in your hands. You give us life. You are love. Lord, we just thank you for how you bring uh, a, a consistent message to us through, through the worship, through the word. Yeah, we just thank you for ministering to us this morning. Amen. So, that brings us to the end of the service. For those of you here, we, we can go to C3 Coffee, and I promise you that Paul won't go around all the tables asking you 41 questions. Unless you want to, of course. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'd just like to, to thank all of those that have been uh, serving this morning and uh, pray that, that you all have a really good week. Thank you very much. <laughs>